A December study released by the National Center for Health Statistics shows life expectancy is declining. Tonight, Color 8's Tanya Motorzitski shows what must be done to reverse the troubling trend. I've put on a little bit of weight, and so I've, I've gone, tried to be more going to the gym, eating healthier, because I do notice that just sitting at a desk, like, at the end of the day, the back's kind of stiff. Brian Hafner is like many of us. He's stuck at his desk majority of the day. He says he's noticed that all of the sitting is taking a toll on his health. And even at home, you just a lot of times you'll get preoccupied with checking Facebook and different uh, technology things instead of actually getting out there and being active. And as research shows us, those few extra pounds may be more troubling than we realize. People are not living as long as um, we once were due to, you know, being inactive, um, chronic diseases, and chronic diseases associated with inactivity and a poor diet. The National Center for Health Statistics says Americans are dying younger for the first time since the 1990s HIV outbreak. Men are dying about 76.3 years old and women at about 81.2. Slight decreases from the year before. Personal trainer David Williams believes that sedentary lifestyles are probably the biggest factor in our, you know, decrease in life expectancy. And that's perhaps the biggest concern for Hafner as he considers the path his own daughter may be on. Try to get my daughter and just both of us being active, going on hikes, going even the winter, snowshoeing, just finding things that you can enjoy outside and just living a healthier life. Billings Clinic dietitian Lisa Rain says people who sit at desks all day should get up and move around more. We have what we refer to as sitting disease. We have so much technology and so many conveniences that we actually have to think about being active. We have to almost put reminders on our cell phone to get up out of our desk and walk. When choosing your next fad diet or workout for your 2017 goals, personal trainer David Williams says you might want to think twice before joining a booty camp or getting a fit tee. They're all the same things with new names, so it's kind of like they recycle ideas. Rain says a lot of times with fad diets, they promise quick weight loss, but you'll gain it all back and more once you stop. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably really is when it comes to weight loss especially. Eliminate the shortcuts. Just eat clean, work out, and speak with a professional for recommendations. Just go and do something is the key and find something you like. And it's good that there's options out there, but it's all going to, you know, achieve the same goal if you go there and you're consistent. Look to see your food preferences, food allergies, tolerances, what can you afford, and be sensible about it. You know, everyone's meal plan will be different. Um, it has to work with your lifestyle and your um, budget. So while Hafner's day job may not allow him to be as active as he may like, he plans to work harder in the future to live a longer, healthier life. So it's something I'll definitely work on more. I'm Tanya Motorzitski wishing you the best as you embark on a new year and a healthier life. William says even if you eat healthy, watch your portions because too much food, even healthy snacks, can work against weight control. Speak with a professional about what your calorie intake should be. Stay away from processed foods as much as possible. You can never go wrong with veggies and fruits. Also, Rains recommends working out for 150 minutes per week to prevent type 2 diabetes and to improve overall health.